Now we come to Ayat Al Kursi. Uh, <clears throat> everybody familiar with Ayat Al Kursi? Hopefully, yeah, right. It is a very good idea for those of us who don't know Ayat Al Kursi by heart that we should learn it by heart. Quite seriously, we should learn it by heart. Before getting into the translation and a little bit of explanation, let's have a look of what Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said about Ayat Al Kursi. Once Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked. Ubay ibn Kaab, and, and Ubay ibn Kaab was a scholar of the Quran, right? All the Sahaba were not scholars, right? Ubay ibn Kaab, and Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, and these were the scholars of the, of the Quran, right? He asked uh, Ubay ibn Kaab, Do you know which is the greatest ayah in the Quran? He replied, Because out of modesty, and every time Rasulullah asked the Sahaba uh, a factual type of question, they, were, they didn't dare just, you know, out of awe of the Prophet, out of respect, out of modesty, all of that, they never said, yeah, 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 I know, let me tell you, right? They would always say, Allah and His Rasul know best. Allah and His Rasul know best. So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam repeated the question. So then Ubay uh, 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 realized that, okay, so he really wants me to answer. So he said, Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyul qayyum. And he recited uh, uh, Ayat al-Kursi. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tapped his chest affectionately and said, may you be congratulated on your ilm. This is also in uh, uh, Bukhari also with a few uh, changes in the words, right? May you be congratulated on your, uh, on your. so this, what is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam calling it? The greatest ayah in the Quran. Abu Huraira <coughs> radiallahu ta'ala and, uh, reports that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, everything has a peak and the peak of the Quran is Surah Al-Baqarah. And it contains the verse, which is the leader of all of the verses in the Quran. Right? So the peak of the Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah, the peak of Surah Al-Baqarah is uh, Ayat Al-Kursi. Abu Umama and report that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever recites Ayat Al-Kursi after every Fard Salah, right? The only barrier between him and paradise is death. Subhanallah. That is why it is very, after every Fart Salah, recite Ayat Al-Kursi. Right? Inshallah. Okay? And uh, uh, only barrier between him and paradise is death, meaning what? So he's a pakka namazi, right? He, he, he prays five times a day, alhamdulillah. That is a given by this hadith. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy is such that if we have the tawfiq to recite, and by recitation, please remember that. By recitation, it means that you are doing it with meaning and with feeling and being involved in it and being drenched in it, you know, all of that. So, inshallah, inshallah, this is a means of getting into paradise. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said that one who recites uh, this ayah before sleeping, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send a protecting angel will be appointed for him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. So, what is this ayah? Allahu la ilaha illahu and please notice, a lot of times, those of us, even when we know the ayah, we sometimes tend to say, It is not, It is, It is not, It is not, وَلَا يُحِيقُونَ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنْ عِلْمِهِ إِلَّا بِمَا شَاءٍ وَسِعَ كُرْسِيُهُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَلَا يَعُودُهُ It is not يَعُودُهُ وَلَا يَعُودُهُ حِفْظُهُمَا وَهُوَ الْعَلِيُّ الْعَظِيمُ Right? Allah. It begins with Allah. A is for Allah. Why is this the greatest verse? Simply speaking, Simply putting, because it talks about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his names, his attributes, his powers, and his abilities. The greatest verse of the Quran is described as being precisely that due to it describing to us our Lord and our Creator. It is pure Tawheed. It is the essence of Tawheed. It is the essence of our understanding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Some days back, remember, we talked about ilah, what the implications are. We talked about what the implications of la ilaha illallah are. Right? So, 
Ayat al-Kursi is the gist of everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to know about him. Just like uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said that um, Surah Ikhlas is one third of the Quran. One third of the Quran, he said that. Why is that? Because Surah Ikhlas is all about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Scholars say that whichever, wherever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in the Quran, that is the greatest place. Greater than any commandments, greater than any historical events that he's talking about, greater than any tathkiyah that, that he's been talking about, because this is all about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those verses are the greatest, right? Alhamdulillah. Okay. So this is one ayah, but there are 10 sentences, like jumla in Arabic, there are 10 sentences in it, in this, in this ayah. 10 different things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said over here. Begins with Allah. Allah is the primary name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by the way, has infinite number of names out of which 99 are extra special and we are aware of those more, right? So it's not that Allah has 99 names. No, Allah's names are infinite. So the first name mentioned in the Quran, Bismillah, Allah, right? Uh, according to uh, scholars, uh, Allah's name, Allah, is kind of, 3,500 times or something in uh, in the Quran, right? There are several opinions as to what this name means, right? The proper name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of the opinions, uh, we're not going to get into a scholarly discussion about all of the opinions, but just to get an idea, right? One of the opinions is that this is the word Allah is derived from wa la ha Walaha, sorry, not ha, ha, which means to reach out, to want, to desire. So in other words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the object that all of creation is desiring. Another meaning is from alaha yalahu, which means to be amazed, to be in awe of, to be astounded. Our minds and our intellect cannot grasp the true reality of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you're like wowed, right? Another uh, opinion is that this is from Aliha Ya'lahu, which means, which is similar to Abada Ya'budu. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al Ma'bud, the one worthy of worship. This is the most academic meaning. And that we've, we've discussed why it is important for me to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it gives me worth. I get worthy, I get substantiated, I get validated by worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he is the al-ma'bud. He is the one who's worthy of worship. And only a being who is perfect in every sense of the word, right, is worthy of worship. Nobody else is. Anyone who falls short of perfection is not worthy of worship. Only Allah falls in that category. You know, there are some scholars who are very strict about that sometimes, you know, you have people, uh, the name of Allah written in, on a plaque or something, and the name, name of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam written on a plaque, and people put it on their walls, like in the same alignment or same together or something. There are certain scholars who are so strict that they say, don't do that. Because you cannot raise Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the level of Allah. Although he's the best of human beings, but he is not worthy of worship. You worship Allah, you follow the Prophet know the difference. You worship Allah. He is the ma'bud. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the abd, the leader who people like you and me follow. Another opinion is that Allah comes from the verb that means to elevate, to raise up. Right? As if Allah is the highest of the high. Right? One of the names of Allah is Al-A'la. Right? We say Allah who akbar, the one who worship, uh, and the ones who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are raised the highest as well. Right, inshallah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, um, La ilaha illa. We begin with negating everything when we accept and say, declare that Allah is our <coughs> ilah, our object of worship, right? Our ma'bud, the one that we are in awe of, right? We have to negate everything else before we say that. Because if we don't negate everything else before we declare this statement, right? 
ilaha illahu except everybody else, then there might be some ilah in our nook and crannies of our hearts, which is, you know, just dwindling there somewhere. And we don't consciously negate that. Nobody is ilah except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so upset with the Christians. They raise Isa alayhi salam to the level of God. He's saying the son of God, right? And they did it out of love, not out of enmity, not out of uh, uh, hatred at all, out of love, right? So we must be careful. The ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never to do that. Right? Allah is Allah and Rasul is Rasul. Rasul himself is an ab. Al-Hayyul Qayyum. These are amazing, amazing names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? These are amazing names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, scholars tell us that these are very powerful names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we should use them to make dua. Al-Hayyul Qayyum. Right? Ya Hayyu, Ya Qayyum, bi rahmatika astari. Right? I am in need of your rahma. The living and the Qayyum the one who sustains the all, the one who has perfect hayat, right? Who has the perfect life, and he is the one who gives life, right? He he's he is the one who is the source of life, right? And al qayyum uh, simply would be he takes care of everything else, right? He has established himself, like we say qayyum, right? He has established himself and he takes care of everything else. Is done by Al Qayyum. Um, these uh, names, Al Hayyu, Al Qayyum, are included in the Ismi Azam, like the greatest names of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Right? Okay. Then Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says, because he is Al Hayy, la ta'kuruhu sinatun wa la naum. So because he is Al Hayy, right? We all need any life, right? Whether it's a human life, it's the life of any creation, right? they need certain things for sustenance. For example, dozing and sleeping. Nobody can do without sleeping. We all need that sleep. We would be absolute, we would be sick and ill and uh, absolute all over the place if we didn't get to sleep or doze. Because Al-Hay is the perfect, has the perfect hayat and the perfect life, right? He has no need like the need of the creation. And to him, lahu, and this includes just about everything you can think of and everything that we don't even know about. Every other thing, everything belongs to him. Hmm? Everything belongs to him. Uh, you can think of, what can you think of, which is between, which, which is in the heavens and in the earth. There are so many things in the heaven and in the earth that even man with all his technology today has not even discovered. Yeah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already owns it. He is the owner. So Allah is establishing his perfectness, right? There is no God, but he, there's no, there's nothing that you can compare him with, right? He's the only Allah. He is perfect in his hayat, right? And he is perfectly looking after everything, taking care of everything, which is between the heavens and the earth, which he has created basically, and he is the master of them. They belong to him, right? And then he says, right? It is a rhetorical question. So who can possibly intercede, right? Who can possibly do shafa, right? The, 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 the shafa has come again. Who can possibly send a little parchi for, for somebody's, in somebody's favor? without his permission. And you know, shafa is actually the least form of power. You go to the owner and put in a request. Yeah. You go to the boss and put in a request that, you know, my cousin, he's just, you know, graduated. So if you can possibly, uh, you know, uh, uh, consider him for this job or whatever, except if Allah allows it. Like human beings, we think of ourselves as being so all powerful, right? Of having so much, uh, position and uh, and respect and uh, influence right these days uh, who are who are most famous influencers right influencers that's a joke really if you compare it to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's power and might you are an influencer for 5 seconds on tiktok and you think the world of yourself who is the greatest influencer you have no influence you have no shafa right 
Shafa, the, the, the least amount of power that you think that you have, that I can influence people in buying stuff and having a certain lifestyle and wanting this. Yeah, that's what the influencers do, right? These are all fake influencers. When you look at the influencer, that is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us over here. There is no shafa, there is no influence, not the least amount of power unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows it. Without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's izn, without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's permission, you can't be even a fake influencer, right? So beware of what you are influencing and whom you are influencing towards what, right? So he knows what is before them and what is behind them. Hmm? One clear meaning over here that of course Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows our reality, but also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what will happen in the future. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what we have done in the past, right? Allah is the only one who actually knows what we are up to or what we have been up to, right? Imagine sleeping right next to Janu. Hmm? You two may be very close to each other. Sometimes we say, I know my children so well. Zilch, nada, yeah, halas, nothing. We probably know very little about our children. What is going on in those heads, on that head? What is going on in that heart? Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows, right? Mothers are very proud to say that I know my child. You don't know nothing about your child or, from, or, in, or about anybody else, right? We don't know. We really don't know. It is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying he knows what is before them and what's behind them while they encompass nothing of his knowledge. Wala yuhiquna. Ahata. Ahata means like a, um, like a boundary wall type of a thing. They don't have any ahata over bishayim, not even a little bit. Bishay absolute is, is used for what scholars say, absolute absence of knowledge. Or as for the creation, they know nothing. There is absolute absence of knowledge except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen to give to whoever. Right? Knowledge is the basis of power. When you know, you can create and you can judge and you can influence and you can do this and you can do that. Hmm? But all of that is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is an incident of, uh, uh, which is related in Bukhari, where Khidr uh, alayhi, alayhi salam and Musa alayhi salam, you know, inshallah, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a tawfiq to come to Surah al -Kahab. So uh, Khidr alayhi salam and Musa alayhi salam are traveling somewhere on a boat, right? So uh, uh, when they were on the kishti, where when they were on the boat, a little bird comes, right? And takes a little bit of water from the, uh, a little bit of water in her beak. So Khidr, says to Musa salam, that our ilm in relationship to the ilm of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not even this little water which is in the beak of this bird. Right? This is to show the vastness and the limitless knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the puny knowledge of all creation, mind you. This is not talking about one person. It is all creation, not just all human beings, all creation. And then what do we pride ourselves on? How can we be arrogant when we know this about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Where does this arrogance come from? That I have got a math degree from Oxford University? Da, 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 da. Good for you, alhamdulillah. But understand that Allah has given you the ahata of that. And that is nothing compared to whatever. So by using that knowledge, you're going to defy Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has given you that little bit, puny bit from the ultimate knowledge that he has. Okay. Uh, now what is this kursi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? His kursi extends to the heaven and to the earth. Some scholars say, number one, the kursi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is different from his arsh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about his arsh at approximately in 11 places in the Quran. But kursi is mentioned just here. There is a kursi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we find out from hadith, which uh, um, Ibn Kathir and Abu Zar Ghafari, uh, uh, Ibn Kathir has uh, related from Abu Zar Ghafari that the kursi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is greater than all of his creation put together. Now, this is one of the mutashabihat. Exactly what it is, we have no idea. The meaning that scholars take from this is 
that this talks about the dominion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So for, that, for example, we, we say in English, the throne of the king is completely uh, overpowers his kingdom. Right? And he has such a throne. When we say that, that means what? That his power and his might and his uh, influence and his uh, uh, strength is all over the, his dominion, all over his kingdom. So this is one way of understanding Kursi. And again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Ali and uh, Al Ali ul Azim, and he does not tire, he does not get weary of looking after a Samawat or Wal Ard or whatever it, it is in it. It doesn't mean much to him at all. It doesn't stress him out at all, to, in the least. I mean, it doesn't even have a dent, etc. It doesn't tire him out at all. And then another good, other the two beautiful names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Wahuwal Aliul Azim, right? Majestic names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Majestic names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, uh, of course, because in these kind of sessions, we don't have the time, and that is not our purpose, to get into the details of each and every letter and each and every word of the Quran we are going through. Our purpose is what? Our purpose is to connect ourselves with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as his servants, as his slaves, and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give us the tawfiq to get a little more knowledge from the knowledge this basic uh, superficial knowledge that we are going through right now, right? So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the tawfiq to recite uh, uh, Ayat al-Kursi, most certainly after our Fard Salah, before going to sleep in the morning, because these are, these are parts of the, uh, this is also part of the Askar of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and has a means of protection. Understanding that I am talking about the mighty, the Ali uh, al-Azim, right? al hayyul al-Qayyum. I'm talking about that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is all of this and much more. 